am Pilar Alcaide, and I am an immunologist and a cardiovascular scientist at Tufts University School of Medicine in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm serving now as the Basic Cardiovascular Sciences 2022 Program Chair, and I have the honor and the pleasure to spend some time with the BCBS 2022 keynote speaker, Dr. Leslie Langwell, a true and inspirational leader for all cardiovascular research scientists who truly exemplifies how basic fundamental findings in the bench can be translated to the bedside. So thank you so much for being with us today, Dr. Lengwad. Happy to be here. So Dr. Lengwad is a professor at the University of Colorado at Boulder, and she has made seminal contributions to our understanding of how cardiac and skeletal muscle adapt to different stimuli. Many of these have direct implications in inherited diseases of the heart. And some of her recent work also focuses on how gender and diet modify the heart. The title of Dr. Lenwan's keynote lecture is From Bench to Bedside, the role of science in treating a deadly disease. So I'm gonna start with a direct question related to, to the topic of your keynote, which is if you could tell us a little bit about how, about how you went from your basic science work in the lab and the thinking of mechanisms to a breakthrough discovery that turned out into the development of the first drug treatment for inherited cardiomyopathies. So I think that, uh, that keeping our eyes on mechanism, as you mentioned, is really key to this. I've been working on myosin genes uh, and mutations in them that cause uh, a variety of diseases for a, a very long time. Sometimes I think people might say, you've been working on this, this set of genes for so many years, how come you don't know still everything that there is to know? I do think that, that understanding about myosin function and structure uh, in the basic sense in a not disease setting was really key to being able to think about developing therapeutics for this deadly disease, which is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And the work that, that we and many others in the field had done over probably 20 to 30 years uh, led us to be able to ask very um, uh, definitive questions about how a therapeutic might be developed. Um, there are probably 500 at least mutations in myosin that result in disease. And so the idea was to find out if we could develop a molecule that might uh, fix what the problem is in the mutated myosins that result in this um, deadly disease, which is the most uh, common cause of sudden death in young people. Um, so there's really no treatment except a heart transplant. Um, so there was a lot of um, impetus to try to develop something that could be used as a, as a therapeutic. But again, I think the underpinnings that we worked with were the basic mechanisms of how myosin actually works to make your heart contract. So in your opinion, then, what is the, the biggest breakthrough in this field of inherited cardiomyopathies and this heart adaptation to stress? Because I think your story is, is amazing. You start by understanding a molecule in a cell, the myocyte, and, and, and then how you, you mentioned that there are many different mutations, right? But you had this vision of studying how it works at baseline so then it can apply to a range of diseases. So what, what would be the biggest breakthrough uh, that, that took you there or others in the field? Yeah. So I have to say, I think that, that the concept of modulating myosin's motor function um, arose from a number of uh, types of investigations, not the least of which was actually the development of a myosin activator, uh, which is the opposite of what our molecule did by this uh, company, Cytokinetics. Um, and it showed that it was possible to modulate myosin um, in a, a safe way um, by understanding the basic mechanisms how myosin worked. When the Seidmans discovered that myosin genes were mutated in this deadly disease, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, that was many years before that. And that also was key to being able to develop the drug that, that our company, Myocardia, now Bristol Myers Squibb, uh, developed. So I, I wouldn't say there was any one independent single thing. I think it was actually people working 
in concert and in academics and in biotech that actually led to our ability to get this molecule. So along along the same lines of, of discovery, I think one thing that has become evident recently is the new technologies, right? So you are a clear example of combining interdisciplinary research. You went from, from basic molecular mechanisms to cellular biology and physiology. I think one of, of the things that uh, people love about your research is how you combine animal models, the conventional ones, rodents and genetics, with the less conventional ones, such as snakes. And, and yeah. then more recently, combining that obviously with human samples. So what do you think, in, in your view, what's you know among the new technologies that are emerging, how do you think these are going to impact the, the field even even farther and even more? I have always been a very, very collaborative person. I don't think that any complex problem can really be solved by a single lab or a single set of individuals. So the I think that the, the future is uh, going to consist of being able to understand how many, many genes will interact to make a patient either respond to a particular therapy or not. You need physicists, you need engineers, um, and that's exactly the place that I like being in the, in the center of, of all of that convergence of both new approaches, but also different approaches. So people think about things a bit differently when they're trained in chemical or biological engineering or in physics. And I think that, that it's that ability to synergize with all of the new sequencing that's being done of people's genomes, et cetera, I think all of that is going to converge on better treatments for a variety of diseases, not the least of which is, is cardiovascular disease. So one, one last question that I have for you before we wrap up this is, uh, is especially geared towards the early career investigators that are very important for the BCBS community. So they always like to learn from, from successful scientists like you, how they got there, but not only that, how how did you become interested in this field in the in the first place? You just mentioned that throughout your career you've collaborated with many people, so probably your your research diverged a little bit, but you always had sort of like a, a main focus, right? So could you could you tell us a little bit for the early career scientists um, how did you become interested in in this field and what what made you persevere to to where you are at now? Yes. Um... So I was fascinated by genetics from a very early stage, I'd say probably freshman in, in college. And I, because of my family's um, uh, somewhat limited view of what women could end up doing with education, I ended up in a small uh, religious women's college in North Carolina. Um, and my professor saw that I was really interested um, in research, even though I didn't quite understand what it was. And so through a series of events, I ended up transferring to Cornell University um, when I was a junior. And I discovered a whole world of science where you could actually do science, um, not just in a, a laboratory classroom setting. Um, and I would say that that was really life-changing for, for me. Um, and I initially had planned to go to medical school. Um, and my professor at Cornell said, you know, why are you doing that? It seems like science is really what you want to do. And he, so I said, well, what path would I take? And he said, well, you could go get a PhD. So I applied to both medical school and, and graduate school because I didn't even know that there were MD PhD programs. Uh, and uh, I never looked back. I went to graduate school and my, did my thesis in human genetics. And I've been interested in genetic diseases ever since. Well, thank you, Dr. Langwell, for these important insights and for sharing your knowledge and all your important contributions to the field and for agreeing to be the BCBS 2022 uh, keynote speaker. And thank you so much for the um, opportunity to give this lecture.